Hey guys, it's Christina. Um, you probably know me in the past as Pocket Full Letters, but I've rebranded to Hey Christina Mac, and I'm working with Zebra Pen today to teach you guys some lettering. It's so weird, I can't see your faces. Um, so what we have is our end goal or end result here is something you can make for your mom or someone, a motherly figure in your life for Mother's Day. So I want to take you guys through those steps, okay? The first thing I want you guys to know um, is when it comes to lettering, we're going to learn the rules to break the rules. I think it was Pablo Picasso who said that, but we're going to learn, you know, the process of it, and then we're going to break it because lettering is all about creating your own style, and you can find that style by you know, using these guides that you can print out at home and by practicing a lot. Um, the first thing I want to introduce you guys to, um, I'm going to talk to you about each individual pen we have here and you can get these all at Michael's. So all these are zebra pens. Um, you can flip to my hands now. Okay. So we have the Zebra Mildliner brush pens. They have a brush tip on the front and at the back, they have a bullet tip, okay? So the brush tip is great when it comes to brush lettering and if you want a more traditional calligraphy style. And the back is great for monoline lettering. It's also great from for cursive, you know, that type of stuff. Um, then we have the Sarasa clip. It comes in a variety of colors. As you can see, I, I put them all in my bag so I don't lose them. Um, I like the different types because they have more pastel, which is they call the milky colors, um, the zebra pen milky colors. And they're clips, they're called Sarasa clips because they actually clip on to like anything. They clip onto a shirt. If you can see me, I could clip it right there. Or they clip on to, um, your paper, if you have a notebook, it's really nice. You can use that as a bookmark if you wanted to. And then we have the fountain pens. Um, these fountain pens are awesome. They are a small tip fountain pen. Um, Zebra really killed it with these ones. I love the, you know, even flow of them. You can't really see it because it's in the corner over here, but we'll, we'll show you how to use it in the um, video or in our little tutorial here. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna review. I see some of you guys um, have questions. So it says zebra sarasa clip is water based. Oh, that's I think that's actually Anne Marie is talking about that. So Anne Marie works for Zebra Pen, and she's just talking about how it's water based. It's pigment ink, so it is water resistant and acid free and archival. And um, okay, and then yep, we got an answer to that. Okay, I love knowing where you guys are all from. Oh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. I lived in. Nashville for a while. Okay, so the next step here we're gonna um, talk about. So just so you know, um, lettering takes a while to learn. Not necessarily learn. Like I can teach you right now. All oh, you can go back to my face just for a second. Sorry, <laughs> I can um, teach you the basics. And when we teach you the basics, you can then go out on your own and continue to practice. The thing I like about lettering is today we'll tell you everything basically you need to know, but the next steps, you have to practice it. If you're not practicing, you really won't improve or get better. I never took a class on lettering when I was learning at all. I um, pretty much self, completely self-taught myself, and I learned tips here and there from different people, but I really just wanted to develop my own style. So here you're going to learn the basics, and then you can go and develop your own style with these tips you're going to learn, okay? So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take out your practice guides, all right? And I know you're gonna feel eager. I'm gonna move these pens. If you'll move back to my hands, I think you did, perfect. Um, so we're gonna move this light down so you can see them better. Okay, so with these practice guides, I know you're gonna to wanna to jump right in and just go with the brush pen and just get right into it. But I suggest you don't, and this is why. Lettering is all about shapes, okay? So you need to learn the basic shapes to then 
incorporate it all into your letters, okay? So on this sheet of paper, um, which you guys can all print out, again, I hope that you saw the link when you signed up for the class, or there's also a link in the chat where you can print these out because they're all free. So this is a huge resource that normally people pay a bunch of money for, and you're getting it for free. This is specifically made for the zebra pens. Um, I made them so that you could really, if you wanted to just learn, you could go to Michael's and grab two pens and you could learn how to letter. It's that simple, two pens. But for the sake of today's class, we're gonna go over a bunch of different pens so you can bring them all together. Um, yes, I think that they will, I, I see the comments here and there when I look at the screen, but um, I think you can, what was the question? Can you link the guide? Okay, yeah, they're linking the guide in the chat for you. Um, and then if I'm missing any other questions, you guys, my team here can let me know. Okay, so the first step are these lettering basics, right? In this guide, you can see I put a dot right here to indicate that's your starting point and that's your ending point with the arrow, okay? So I want you, and I'm going to use my separate paper. Um, that way we, I can do more and you can guys, you guys can do this at home too. I also suggest tracing paper. Tracing paper is great because you don't ruin you know, your actual guy, and you don't have to continue to print and print and print. Um, it will be better in the long run. And then you can use up every single piece of space here, right? Okay. So the first thing you do is you start out and you learn these basics. Now, you might ask, which you have it in the chat, why are you starting out with a fountain pen? Or why are you starting out with the zebra sarasa clip? Um, the reason why is basics. Again, I'm going to say it, you're going to go to the basics and, you know, I can't tell you immediately like, okay, brush this. No, you have to get your hand into, um, shape to know how to do these letters. Right. I remember I learned Spanish and, um, everything when I was being taught Spanish, you have to, your tongue has to move a different way than it does in English. And in Spanish, you, continue to talk and you continue to practice so that your tongue then gets warmed up to be able to say the letters in a certain way, the, the different things. That's just like lettering, learning a different language. You know, you have to practice and you have to get your muscles, your hand muscles, your wrist muscles in shape to do this. Okay. Yes. Someone just said it builds muscle memory. 1000%. You need to build muscle memory. And once you build muscle memory, you know, it will be so much easier to bring in the brush pens. Okay. So easy. If you were to start out with this, I know people who start out with the brush pen immediately, they get discouraged. They don't, they feel like it's too hard. The only problem is really, and the difference is again, the muscle memory. I love that you said that. So you build it by using these, um, the zebra sarasa clips or the fine liners. Okay, so that's one thing that we're gonna do is just practice. I'll show you guys, the clips are awesome too. Um, I really like the, the teal one. Oop. Just move that. So we can do, practice with any monoline type pen, okay? The specifically, I just, guys, this clip part, look, and I'm only paid to teach. I'm not necessarily paid to, you know, tell you to get zebra. This is great. So we'll clip that over here. And then this one, this shape right here, I guys, there are, there are technical names for this, but to be completely honest, I've used my brain power with to, um, yes, this is disposable. I've used my brain power with to just know the shapes and not necessarily know the names. <laughs> okay. What I'm also going to show you right now while we do this next one, we're still practicing muscle memory. So I'm not going to use the brush pen side with the um, zebra mild liners. There is the bullet tip at the, on this side. So even if you wanted to skip the clip, you could use your bullet tip. The same situation. We're building muscle memory and just doing the shapes, doing the shapes. Okay. I also want you to practice when you're using the mono tip pen, holding your pen at almost like a 45 degree angle. Lettering is not from the top like this. 
it's from an angle, okay? You're gonna wanna continue to do an angle with 45 degrees, all right? That will help your muscle memory too. It will be easier um, the sec like once you use a brush pen to keep in mind the 45 degree angle. I think we're used to just like writing in school, hey, just like that, you know? But really, or maybe I think I did 45 degrees because I'm used to doing it that way. But usually in school, we write like this or we, we don't necessarily write on the edge. I always have to tell my kids, hey, don't use the tip of the pen. You're going to ruin it. You need to use, or the marker, excuse me. You need to use the side. Okay, so we are going to continue to learn those shapes and build those muscle memory. All right, you can tell here, continue, continue. Beep, beep. We'll just do a couple of these. I'll just show you because you start at the dot and then you move to the next one. Did I hear something? Oh, or was someone unmuted for a second? Okay, um, let's see. I'm just gonna tap over to here with the questions to see if you guys need any. This is the first time I've heard to just get used to a pen to build muscle memory. I love it. Not so much discouragement in my opinion. Exactly, guys, exactly. I'm so glad because really um, this all goes to shapes and your movement, right? Shapes and movement. Um, I'm gonna skip ahead because I will go into the letters next, but I do wanna show you with the um, Zebra Mild Liner brush, just what I would do if I were you practicing this. So we hold, a brush pen at a 45 degree angle. You can hold it with one finger. You can hold it with two. I tend to hold it like this. Um, I love the extra support with the two fingers here, the two fingers here and my thumb. Um, I have seen people who letter differently to be completely honest. It, it is just up to you what you do um, and how you hold your pen. The most important part is holding it at a 45 degree angle. So you start, okay. Let me just show you with a brush pen, you can get a thick stroke. Let me move this over. A thick stroke by pressing more pressure. A thin stroke is by just getting it on the tip, same angle with less pressure, right? But with lettering, we're gonna do the upstroke with less pressure, the downstroke with more pressure. That way we can get the desired results. Now you will see in some of my lettering, like right here, I break the rules. That's my point is if you didn't catch the beginning of my um, intro, I told you how we would learn the rules to break the rules. Um, if you're gonna have a step-by-step -step of lettering, I'm gonna write this out for you guys because I do want you to see it. I also, maybe Anne-Marie, you could write this in the chat, but step one is to build your muscle memory. And just so you know, guys, this is my normal handwriting. As you can tell, it is not as pretty as lettering. Lettering is different. Again, this is handwriting. Lettering is learning shapes. Two, it's really important to, um, oh my gosh, my brain just lost it. Is Okay, so build the muscle memory with the shapes. Um, work on the 45 degree angle, 45 degree angle. And then, um, the third step is to, okay, work on the 45 degree angle, learn the brush strokes, learn brush strokes, brush strokes. And then the fourth uh, strokes, gosh, when I write guys, I legitimately like forget how to spell things because I'm worried about my hands. Okay, and then four is to incorporate it all together and um, learn the rules, to break the rules, learn the rules to break the rules, break the rules. We should like create a club where it's LTR, BTR, learn the rules, break the rules, create your own lettering style. And then you get your own, look at this, style, okay? All right, let's go back to, ready? our lettering basics. Um, I will leave this. Oh wait, no, Amory put the info in the chat. So you guys don't need that. But um, I did see earlier, what type of paper do I recommend when it comes to lettering? I definitely prefer a pen paper or marker paper 
Uh, you can purchase that at Michael's. It works the best with zebra oh, yeah, pens, brush pens. Um, I'm not sure. I think I someone's to unmuted, just FYI. Um, okay, so with the mild liner brush pens, I recommend, again, um, and if Amory could write this in the chat, marker pen, marker paper or pen paper. It is real. The thing about these zebra pen mild liner brush pens is they are felt tip pens. So with printer paper, um, it could, you know, it wouldn't last as long if you continually use paper, pet paper, pen, excuse me. <laughs> it wouldn't last as long any of your markers. Like that's not just for zebra mild liner brush. It is literally any felt tip marker will not last as long if you're using printer paper because printer paper actually um, has a texture to it that sticks onto felt tip pens. Whereas with marker paper and pen paper, it's very smooth. You'll feel the, dis the difference. You can also use um, Bristol paper as well. Um, I honestly though, sometimes don't care about the felt tip and I want the look of like a rugged look. So I will use watercolor paper to create that cool water, like textured effect with the pens. Just know that it absorbs the, the pens more and it also um, like creates that fray because of the texture. Um, again, that's not just zebra mild liner, that's any brush, that's any marker you could ruin. Like you just wanna take care of them. They're great to take care of. I, I consider my pens my, my babies. You know, we want to, we invest in these nice pens and we want to, you know, cherish them. And the way to do that is by treating them well, just like you would, you know, your own children or your own body or whatever, you know, we, we wanna treat our, our nice things well. Okay, so back to the basics. Also, you'll see I like to go off on random tangents. Um, once you complete the um, exercises, you'll then incorporate the brush, right? And, oh, sorry, I've got, so you do up with the thin, down with the thick. Now, you'll see I have a little shake here. You're gonna say, Christina, why when I'm doing the brush pen, do I have a little shake? Well, that brings back in the word muscle memory. I am honestly loving it that, you know, someone brought up muscle memory because it's so important to do. Um, when I sit down to letter, I have to practice and get my hand going first. I have to, you know, you're, you're normally moving your, I, as you can tell, I move my hands a lot throughout this, you know, talking, you move it to do the dishes, you move it to help people, you move, your hands constantly are moving. But when you sit down to letter, you're going to need to, you know, exercise those muscles. So even right now, like before this class, I didn't sit down and exercise my muscles and look at what happens. I, I have bumps. Now this sometimes discourages people. They're going to be like, I can't steady my hand. No, again, I have been doing this for almost 10 years and look, I still don't perfectly study my hand if I haven't gone through the basics. Even just going through the basics a little bit, you can tell, look at the difference. That was not even intentional. My hand can quickly get back into the mode of straight and controlled. Whereas, you know, before, let's see if, yeah, the downstroke is straight and controlled. It gets, as you can tell, look, one, it took, what, four warm up streaks to get to that straight line. At first, you guys, if you're a straight up beginner, this is going to take, you know, I, if you, it just depends on your time. If you invest your time, this will take faster. I remember sitting on vacation um, in California. I, I live in Utah. And I remember sitting on the couch. We were at this, my uncle's house and literally just had my notebook. Oh my gosh. I wish I like brought it out for you guys to see because I still have it. And I just would go through the shapes. I'd watch a show and go through the shapes. I'd watch, you know, I just would go and practice that way. I could develop that muscle memory and do it that way. Okay. And then downstroke. Okay. Another thing that I forgot to mention is where you position your fingers. I, you know, sometimes it just depends on the type of lettering I want to do. If I want to do smaller lettering, I tend to hold my finger closer to the brush. If I'm doing more exaggerated lettering, I hold my hands further back. 
So that really just depends on personal preference for you. And, um, but know that, so you need to move your hand around as you practice to see what comes more naturally and more comfortable for you. Um, I want you to pay attention while I'm teaching you to my hand placement on the pen. And this is recorded, so you can go back later and look, oh, Christina's hand is here when she does that. It's here when she does that. Um, because that will help you feel more comfortable with what works for you. Because I do actually switch it up a little bit, as you could tell. Okay. Let's go to this first page of the alphabet really quick. I'm going to just scroll through to see if there's any comments that I need to touch on. I don't get how, oh wait, hold on. Please scoot over a bit so we can see her whole hand. You, oh yeah. Okay. I'll scoot over. Thank you for that feedback. I don't get how to make a thin upward stroke. Okay. Thank you for asking. We're going to do that again. Um, okay. So right here is the tip of the pen. I think my hand is good. Y'all let me know if I need to move my hand over anymore. Okay. Um, right here is the tip of the pen. Okay. When you're doing an upward stroke, you only want about that much as my fingers shake. <laughs> you only want about that much to touch the paper. Okay. When you do a downward stroke, you want about that much to touch the paper. So let's get this really close. I'm actually going to move my camera down here. And I'm going to see right now you're not looking at my hand right now. You're looking at the tip and I'm really hoping yeah, it's in focus. Um, it's in focus. Okay. So we're going to do an upward stroke. Do you see how only that tip hits the paper? That little tip right up to there. Okay. And that I'm not applying much pressure with my hand. It is very light. And that is why you get a little shake that you have to work through because you're literally just going like this with the pen, but more controlled. If you want to practice like this to get the tip, that's great too. But once you get it where you're thin, you do it more controlled. With the downstroke, remember, we're going to get like about that much of the tip of this pen on the paper. Okay, ready? Watch, watch how much of the pen is on that paper. And to get that, you apply the pressure at the top, push down, and almost like pull the pen down with you. Okay. Again, practice. Okay. Even if you're, you know, new, practice. Or I mean, not new, an intermediate or professional, practice. That is the most important. Okay. Let's get you back up here with my extra fancy setup of books on my charger. Okay. Let's see. I saw a couple questions. Can you show how to combine thin and thick? Oh yes, we are getting there. Don't worry. We're going to combine thin and thick strokes. You're left-handed. There is so, okay. For left-handed people, you can letter. There's a lot of misconceptions about left-handed people not being able to do this. Um, I'm going to touch on that really quick. I'm sure a few of you are left-handed. Um, the key with being left-handed is you, um, your letters might tilt the other way, right? I feel like I'm blocking it with my, since it's on my right-handed, but same thing, like practice the strokes and I'm not even left-handed and I can practice the strokes, um, like that. Um, and then with left-handed, you almost like pull it rather than like you, yeah, you pull it with both, but there's a great, there's a lot of great, um, left-handed letters out there. If you search a hashtag on Instagram, lefty letters, uh, you can find, um, a lot of resources that have tips on the difference between lefty and righty. Do you use calligraphy books to learn more lettering or does the template show you how to do all the letters? Oh, no, no. Literally, you don't need to get any other book. I mean, you can if you want for like templates and stuff, but these have every single letter that, you know, to learn lowercase and uppercase. It is all right here. Okay. All right. So back to combining the up and the down stroke. That is where this U shape comes in. Again, there's technical, 
you know, words for these, but um, I invested more time in learning the shape than learning the word. So you start with the bottom right here, really thin, come up. And as you come over that corner, you push it down. All right, let's get you close again. I'll get you real close, okay? You start with the very thin tip. You come up around and you press down. It is really natural for you to move that shape when you're going through this. Pull and down, okay? And then for this almost end shape one, right there, you see that, that one. Don't you love my hands? You can tell I'm an artist just by the fact that I literally, I wash my hands regularly and I always have ink and everything on it. Um, like, don't know where that color came from. I think probably my painting earlier. Um, is this printable on Zebra? They added the link in the chat. So if you scroll back in the chat, there's a link. And I think there was a link when you signed up as well. Okay, here we go. Oh, we're on the end shape. Okay, end shape the same. So we start out with the thin, see how it's thinly touching, come around. And I want you to notice right here, when I come over the corner, thick down. Then I'm coming to another corner. We're gonna do thin up. As you can tell, I'm shaky. Why am I shaky, Christina? Oh, cause I haven't practiced today. As you can see with the couple we'll do, my shakiness will come out. Let me tell you guys, I've been doing this for 10 years basically. And look, I still get shaky if I don't warm up. If you go look at my videos on Instagram, if I have a steady hand, it means I was doing these exercises multiple times before my video. If I have a shaky hand, it's because I literally just sat down and recorded a video. As you can tell, look, shake coming out, shake coming out. So thin up, thick down around the corner, thin up, okay? With the O shape, it's essentially the same. You start thin, you come around that, Oh, sorry, guys. I always do that. Okay. With the O shape, excuse me, you come down thick and then you thin up. Now, the reason why I mess up sometimes is because I have learned the rules to break the rules. So sometimes I just go and do my own thing, you know, but essentially spend time learning this, breaking it will be easier and you'll create your own style. So we're going to do thick, thin. Oh, shake, thick, thin. Shake comes out the more you do it, thick, thin. Notice how it really changes at the angles right there. Okay. And now we're gonna do the P shape. Same thing. Thin to thick. Oh, that I need to fix that on the guide because the downstroke isn't as thick. And then with the J shape, thick down, thin up. Thick down, thin up. Okay. It's at the corners here where you make the transition, okay? Let's pull out some letters here because I know you guys are interested in getting the letters going. And as I do that, I'm going to look at your questions. Please, your speaking is too fast. Oh, I'm so sorry. I speak so fast, but, and I'll try to slow down because I'm very aware and I always get caught up in the heat of it and I start to speak fast again. But this is being recorded. So if you miss something that I'm saying, you can go back and view it on the website. Now, do you think I should start with uppercase or lowercase letters? Where's my A uppercase? Let's start with, as I go through. Okay, here's some lowercase. In uppercase. I like uppercase. For some reason, my A is not in here. Okay, that's okay. I'm going to grab a separate sheet of paper right here. Okay. And we are going to want to do this. All right. With letters, I want to reiterate it is all about shapes when it comes to lettering. You can tell right here, this is a shape. This is a shape. This is a shape. This is a shape. Okay. The key is to learn these individual letters because when it comes to lettering, you are going to attach individual letters. I want you to see, and if you go back to the beginning of this um, video, you'll see that I, when I was like just 
throwing things around like high, I detached my hand before I did like between the H and the I. So um, let me just show you an example. Uh, I just see someone's name is Mindy pop up right here. So we're going to do, um, I'll just do Mindy. So you do a thin upstroke, thin downstroke, thin upstroke, thick downstroke. Okay. For the M I'm going to detach right here. You can add a little flick if you want. And then I do an I, right. Then I detach and then I do an N. Then I detach. Then I do a D detach. Then I do a Y detach. Okay. You see how each of these shapes, AKA letters were all detached and placed together. It's like a puzzle. Okay. That one I kind of kept together just cause that is my style. You know, I got to go back to the basics. Jeez, Christina, you're teaching people here. So again, that's what we're going to do. Okay. Um, let me, after nailing down the strokes, do you think it's best for beginners to start with uppercase or lowercase letters? I personally think uppercase is so pretty. Like when you look through the guide, you can see how pretty it is. However, you're not going to make a complete sentence or a complete phrase with all uppercase. It just doesn't look good. So if I were you, I would actually probably start at the lowercase if you're anxious to start getting projects going because you can make sentences and you can make phrases um, with just lowercase. You can even make your lowercase, like that's kind of a lowercase M, look like an uppercase letter. You know, we're doing Mother's Day, so... Mother's Day, um, even though in reality, this should be capitalized, this should be capitalized, this looks good. Yes, again, the rule is to capitalize this, is to capitalize this, but we're breaking them here. And when someone looks at a beautiful lettering piece, they're not thinking, oh my gosh, they were supposed to capitalize the M or the D. They're looking at, oh wow, that lettering is so beautiful. Um, so let's keep going with that, okay? I'm just gonna review each shape here. Um, with the Zebra Mildliner brush, you just go through and you do the thick to the thin. The thick strokes to the tip. Guys, I gotta get a drink of water, uh, drink really quick. My voice, my throat is very dry. I live in Utah, it's very dry here. Okay, someone said, sorry if I missed it, what size pen do you have? Okay, these um, Sarasa clips, Amory or Lisa from Z Bike Bro, you guys are gonna have to tell me what size tip it is, but really any of these Sarasa clips for the pen um, are just great to practice. And then this tip, there's a one size fits all with the brush pen tip. They are every single pen um, that Zebra or Marker sells at Michael's all is the same shape. Okay. So there they are. They're all, as you can tell, all the same. And the colors are so beautiful. They're called mild liners for a reason because they are very mild and they're honestly, you can't like, here, I'm getting, I'm getting distracted, but it's okay because the colors are so beautiful. As you can tell, they're so pretty. They sell 25 different um, color types at Michael's. Um, so you can create different pieces. You can swatch them out. You can, you know, the world is your oyster with these. I love markers because sometimes with paint, if you get different colors, you have to color match here. You can just buy exactly the same color that you want. Zebra Pen does offer metallic brush pens. However, oh, I, I think they're at some stores. I don't know. Amory has to answer that one. Um, okay, let's see. So I clip at the, I think. I'm up to date with your, do you think the, re okay, here we go. Do you think the reason I'm having trouble with the thin lines is because I don't have um, zebra pens, but artwork pen? Um, yes, I really think that the materials you, 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 the materials you use to learn really do matter. 
Um, if you're going with a cheap pen, you're gonna essentially get cheap work. If you're going with the nicer pen and the tip that's made specifically for something like this, you're gonna have better work. The same goes for anything. You know, if you're gonna do, um, if you're gonna go snowboarding, I'm a snowboarder, you're gonna wanna have a good snowboard or you're literally gonna go nowhere, you know? Um, so again, this tip is specifically made for brush lettering and it's perfect. The perk about using these pens too is it's almost like um, two pens in one because it can be used as a highlighter too. It's really awesome. They do offer zebra pen mild liner highlighters at the store um, as well. Those pens are a chisel tip on the front and a bullet on the back. So they do have those at the store too, just so we can touch on that. Um, with the these packs of pens, I do want you guys to know that I like about them is they are they don't bleed through paper. Um, I know some people like to do Bible lettering or um, work with that and they don't bleed through those thin papers. Um, or I, I think any other paper I've used, they've never ever, they don't bleed through at all. Like you can see here, they don't bleed through. Okay, um, I wanna just answer one more question and then I'll go back uh, or I'll answer two. The, that lowercase m you did on a mother's day doesn't look like an uppercase or lowercase from either of your sheets. Yes, that is true. So I um, do want you to know I'm all over the place with my lettering. This is the lettering that I um, made for you guys to practice. My M I did on this is me um, after lots of practicing these basic shapes, just creating this on my own. I like how you know, the shape goes, but if I were to do it, like it's on the sheet, it would be from the low to the high to the low to the high for the capital. And then I forget how on the sheet. Oh yeah. On the sheet, I did a version of this, but I, um, added this and then I made this side almost down to here. So as you can tell, that's the basic rule right here. This is how I break it by stylizing it. I hope that makes sense. So this is, these are, these are the rules and this is stylized. Okay, let's see. What is marker paper? Marker paper is specific paper made for markers. Um, I won't go too much into it right now, but again, it's specifically made for markers. So absorbs it perfectly into the paper. It doesn't hurt um, felt tip pens and it is smooth and lovely, it's like, it's great. So yeah, you can get that at your local Michaels store. Um, let's see, okay, perfect. So let's go back. I'm gonna go to the lowercase just because as we're doing that, we're gonna talk about our project soon. Okay, we've got about 20 minutes left, so I wanna make sure I get enough time to do the project. Okay, shapes, we're gonna, I'm gonna briefly go through lowercase, then we'll go to the project. Um, so you guys can actually then create something when we're done with this class. Um, shapes, you can see here, it has that thick down stroke, thin up stroke, thick down stroke. Sometimes you'll see me do my Bs with this. Sometimes I'll stylize it and do it this way. You know, if you're my age or around my age or older, you guys learned cursive in school. So there is cursive like tendencies here with lettering. Um, so you can do the cursive type B with your lettering, or you can do a fun lettering B. Okay. Um, the shape of the C, the shape of the D, E, E. Okay. So practice these, um, practice these and you will then be able to combine them. So these next sheets of paper, let me see here. I'm going to pull you guys back again as you're on one of my fancy books. I made these templates. Let me pull it up for you guys to practice your lettering and to make something for your friends or family. And I hope that light works. You can see it right here. Okay. Um, if this is for just a woman in your life that you want to celebrate on Mother's Day, um, or you could replace woman with someone else, like I'm a strong woman or man because 
a strong grandma raised me or a strong man raised me, whatever you want to put, you can make these individual to you. Um, here's that M you can practice. I put it on this practice sheet, mom to the world. You may just be one person, but to me, you are the world. You might be asking Christina, why did you do it gray? Here's the reason why I made this gray is because I want you guys to be able to take like one of your darker pens or one of the lighter ones and go over that way. It's something you made. Okay. Um, and you can practice. And here's another version of my M that I do. Okay. Um, or you can also take this, take another piece of paper, stack it on top, go to a window or have a light board and letter it yourself with nothing underneath. Okay. I want to point out here with this project that each of these shapes is an individual letter. Sometimes when I break the rule, I combine them. Sometimes I keep them separate. Okay. Like you can tell here, I separated them, but I kept these together here. I liked that style. Okay. Same with here, separate here, but combined here. This was separate. This is combined. All right. So when you do this and you copy my style, copy, 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 then when you're comfortable, create your own, like don't, you know, use the downstroke on the W there. Don't use the downstroke. Yes. Use the upstroke thinner. It's great. Um, with, so I created these, I'm going to backtrack a little bit with you guys. I want you to see how my like sketch process goes when it comes to, this is a sketch. When it comes to lettering pieces, I do want to touch on composition because I want you guys to go out of this class knowing you can create something on your own as well as using my prompts. Um, you can see when I was sketching this out, and this is the one that I, I probably threw away the others to be honest, but I was writing it in different ways. Like, oh, should I do this part capitalized? Should I do this part cursive? I am strong woman because a strong woman raised me. Like which part I don't necessarily letter when I do the pencil sketch. I'm just writing in brick or block letters where I would want something with block letters. And then I'm adding the lettering in my cursive gross handwriting just to indicate, okay, I would do the lettering here. Let's see if I brought over another sketch. Oh, these were sketches I did with, and my son's cookie got on it because he was had a cookie on his hand and went, rrr, rrr. but this is real guys. I'm keeping it real for you guys. Okay. Um, life. So this is another sketch for these ones. Life doesn't come with a manual. It comes with a mother. So you can see that I kept to the basic lettering techniques here. I'm so sorry, but you guys know I'm just a real person. I'm, this happened. Um, the lettering techniques here and also when it comes to the writing so this is also lettering because as you guys saw my real handwriting would put mother as like this it's really terrible so this is more controlled and nice um then this is another sketch right here that i did uh to do it i did the flowers which is a great thing i will touch on a little bit because it's not fully lettering, but you can do flowers and other things with these brush pens. I want you guys to know that. Um, okay, hold for a second while I move this out of the way. And then we'll touch on this fun project. Um, as you can see, these are all the pretty other Sarasa clip, zebra Sarasa clip pens. Okay, let's see what some of your questions say. I wish I could. I'd love to see how you drew the rose. Yes, I will show you guys how to draw the rose. Really easy and simple. Um, that is perfect since it is the page of the mother's club. Okay, thank you for lettering. Uploads, you're welcome. How do you know how big the words will be so they can fit? Great question. Look at what happened. I want you guys to, I did bring this out. I'm so glad you guys brought that up. Here's the first one I did. Um, I sketched them out on another piece of paper. And the other piece of paper I sketched out on was smaller. And as you can see, it is very off-centered here. Like this is down here. This is too much space up here. When I went to recreate it right here, I made sure I had the right spacing. The way you can do that is I actually placed this under here and I have a light board. So I made sure it was placed. Oh, sorry. I'm like, I'm out of the camera view. 
Um, I have a light board, so I placed it perfectly out of the sheet of paper. If you don't have that, you can get, um, do your sketch, grab some tape, tape it up to a window and you can perfectly center it. Um, you can use a ruler. I know people who use rulers. I don't really like to have pencil lines on um, marker paper or on my paper. So I do like to make sure if I'm wanting it perfectly aligned that I line it up either underneath or I line it up with other things. Okay. Um, that was a great question that Amory added the link again. I just joined, I can't see previous chats. I think in the um, recorded video, you'll be able to see previous chats. It said, okay, here's a comment. I like to use special lettering like this when I'm writing greeting cards, but it is not special paper. Can you address that? Yes, you can totally use normal paper. Um, just know with normal paper, um, the felt tip, um, the color in the felt tip might not last as long because it absorbs more in the paper and you want to make sure, um, it, but I'm sometimes like, I'm okay with that. I, I am okay with that, but also like, I like to use them with watercolors and all that. Um, but I also do think to my point earlier, they are precious. So I'm very selective with using the paper. So if you wanted to make your greeting cards, maybe buy one pen for your greeting cards and one pen, um, you know, another pen in the same color because they have, you know, for when you want to do lettering on nice pieces of paper, you know, they're affordable to the point where you could just buy two and use one selectively for one project and one selectively for another. I tend to do that because my kids actually steal my pens all the time. So I usually end up buying two so I can give one to my kids and then hold on to another to keep it nice so that they're not coming to poach mine and it's very controlled. Okay, um, practice sheets are linked. Yep, practice sheets are linked. Uh, da -da. All, can also keep the pens open longer, which allows time for blending. Yes, blending is great. We'll go over, oh man, time is short. We'll go over a little bit of blending. Um, I love um, blending with these colors to bring them together. One way I blend with them, and I'm gonna bring you down is I like to start with the lighter color. I'm just gonna show you a thick downstroke. Then I take the darker color and I'm gonna apply the dark color up at the top. Okay, darker color. And then I'm gonna go in with the lighter color and bring it on top to blend it down. Okay, that's one way to blend these pens. And this is on marker paper, okay? Another way to blend these pens is to take the darker color and apply it onto the lighter color. And you get a nice blend. As you can see, darker here, lighter here. It's really pretty. Okay, that was quick. Now let's talk about the flowers. I wanna show you guys how to do the flowers, okay? Flowers are very, very simple here. Um, I basically like to describe them as little semicircles, right? So you get the semicircle in the middle, the semicircle out. And you're gonna just um, continue to pull those semicircles out. Now with lettering or with these brush pens, you there's no real like um, rule to where you apply the pressure and where you don't. It's really just up to you on what you wanna do there, okay? So as you can tell, there's a crease here. So I'm gonna put this over and I'm gonna attach these two by going like this. And they're all like semi-circles. I wanna cover this part. And with, um, let's see, semi-circles with some ribbing, I guess, to create that flower effect. And you just move it out as you please. In this, I didn't show, in my sketch, I didn't show, but you can also like some flowers have, um, you know, the little, they're curved over a little bit more. So if you wanted to, you can add the curve to the flower. Okay. And then the leaves are pretty simple. You just take a greenish or green color, or you can do any color because we learn rules, break rules, and just essentially create a leaf like that. And look, that you can use on literally anything you want. 
And I like to do, sometimes I'll do the markers like this and I'll take a, a fountain, the zebra um, fountain pen and I'll come in and I'll add some ink work to it. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know, I like to add ink work to my pieces and it's not necessarily any rhyme or reason behind it, like behind where I place the ink. It's literally like, oh, I think that would look good there. I think that would look good there. Oh, let's add another ink work, you know, leaves right there. That looks cool. I actually would want to probably cover it all like that. Um, my Instagram is hey Christina Mac. So with a C H Christina Mac. Okay. Perfect. So there we go. Um, all right, let's see here. Before I bring it all together for our project that you guys can work on at home, I just make sure I'm going to show you how to bring it all together. And for the last five minutes, so in four minutes, I will go over um, how to bring it all together for you. So hit me up with your questions that you have right now, and then I will bring it all together at, or I'll bring it all together right now and then answer your questions at the end. Okay. When you either now or, you know, when you, hold on, let me grab this paper, get your project. I was going to use this one, but because I painted on it, I will use this one because I just showed you how to do these. And remember, you can do these in your brush pens or you can add them with the um, zebra fountain pen to add the accents, right? So when you get home, when you get to do this project, um, yeah, guys, sorry, on Facebook, since I'm re currently rebranding, I'm actually pocket full of letters. If Anne Marie will write that out, that would be great. But you can also get the link in my Instagram. Um, so when you work on this at home, or wherever you are, you can just create the piece by separating the shapes and make sure to practice beforehand so you're not shaky and bring it all together, okay? Again, practice beforehand so you bring it all together. You add the three flowers up here and then you can add accents, okay? The way you add accents, sometimes people add it, I'm gonna show it in a couple different ways. Um, where's my sketch on this one? You can see that I added it with the dark shot with the shadow, this gray, this light gray color, the zebra mild liner, the light gray. Um, I went in and I added all the shadows on the left side like that. Okay. With the fountain pen, you could go and add like a little extra pizzazz by, you know, on the downstrokes, adding a line to the left third, one third of it, and adding some dots, okay? That's another way you can add some accents to your lettering. Um, another thing you can do is if there's not enough flourish that you want, you can come in and, let me get this right, add some flourishing, you know? I wouldn't do that, that doesn't look that great, but you could, you know? Um, to your piece, like if I wanted to add a little flourish there, you can add a flourish to your piece. Um, if you want to learn more about flourishing, I recommend just the hashtag flourishing on Instagram. It's great. Um, so flowers bringing all together. I challenge you guys to do one of these and then you can go to the store and frame it and it would look beautiful. It'd be a homemade work of art um that you can give to the person you love okay now um if you'll switch to my face we will i'll go over these last couple questions okay i'm gonna just keep this here okay let's start here Do -do. how do you know when to make the letters lower or higher we went over that at the beginning of the oh lower or higher no, we didn't go over that. We went over thick and thin. That one is about learning the rules to break the rules. There's no rule behind um, up higher or lower. You just see like an M and you're like, oh, let's experiment. Uh, let's experiment. You can keep it on my face, but you can also see in the little corner. Um, I think you can by um, hand, but you just play around. Sometimes you're going to want the M bigger right there, or sometimes you're going to want the M 
smaller than that. Like it's really up to you how you're going. Oh, I didn't even choose how you're gonna do your letters. You can play around, um, but it's really a personal preference. I tried it with my calligraphy pen and it worked really well. The class was too quick. I'm sorry. Um, but I did cover a lot. So if you are thinking I talked too quickly or it went really fast, please, please go rewatch this video so you can, um, you know, you can cover everything. Um, zebra sarasica pens are gel retractable. Yep. Okay. Can't find, um, oh, we'll put, I'll put my link in the bio. Why use click pens versus fountain pens? That's personal preference. Um, really it's just personal preference. One's ballpoint, one's the fountain. Um, and then we have watercolor paper can be used hot pressed and smooth. Yes. Thanks. Anne Marie guys, Anne Marie, um, answered a lot of these questions for you guys. Um, let's see when I use the fountain pen on my liner, it blended together and turned into a mushy color. What can I do to prevent this? Yes, you need to wait. It depends on the paper. So if I were to use printer paper, that would definitely happen. But as you can tell on um, the paper here that I used, um, it did not do that because it, it had allowed for drying time in between. There is a period which is great for blending because you don't want the drying time to be insanely fast because then you don't blend. Here it's fast enough where you won't smudge it, but to apply a, another ink on top needs to be um, more, a like two more seconds in between. Um, cardstock, cardstock's good. Um, let's see. Awesome. Okay. You mentioned watercolor paper. Can you use that instead of marker paper? I would only suggest using watercolor paper if you're going for that effect. Otherwise, to protect your pens, I would use a marker paper. Um, so you blend on another paper and then use that pen on the real paper because it has the other color on it or blend it part of your final piece. So um, you can blend by doing multiple ways. The tip I showed you on top, I showed you, you can also get a plastic bag and put the first color down and take the next color and soak up the other pigment on, on top of the marker tip. And that's a way to blend too. Okay, and then do you ever go back and fill in a thinner downstroke if it isn't thick enough? Yes, I do that all the time. Sometimes you can do what's called faux calligraphy or fake calligraphy, and you use the bullet tip and you do the lettering with the bullet tip, then go in and apply all the downstrokes with the brush pen. Okay, and let's do one more. More info on greeting cards. Oh, someone put um, info on greeting cards. That's great. Um, okay. Okay. If you want to see how I was holding the pen while I was writing, please check out the recording of this because I did a really good close up of holding the pen. All right. And then it says, if I learned calligraphy, is this why I'm having trouble with the brush tip rather than the nib, which is firmer? Yes. Yes. It is completely different. Don't even think of it as the same thing. Calligraphy with a nib and lettering, if you're learning, separate the two in your brain, go for lettering, completely different. And then with um, calligraphy, it's just totally different styles. Lettering is about the shapes of the letters and working with the shapes of the letters. Calligraphy is more about um, the flow and almost more like um, cursive too. Okay, guys, um, if you have any more questions, feel free to hit either me up on Instagram at Hey Christina Mac. Um, or if you go to my Instagram, you can get my email, send me an email, or you can hit up Zebra Pen Team or Michaels, and we can help you with any questions you have. I hope that you guys have a great preparation for this Mother's Day and create a beautiful template that you can frame and hang on your wall for your mother or for someone you love. Um, thank you for coming here with me today. And thank you Zebra Pen and Michaels for having me. And I hope you guys have a great day.